Hi hey everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Nick. Uh, I lead the sequels business at TBD. TBD is part of Block. It's kind of a one leads to the other kind of thing, but essentially we're a little startup with Block that's running an LSP. So I'm here to talk to you about LSPs today. The first question I get whenever I talk about LSPs is what is an LSP? Um, so I have a little slide here from the Bitcoin design guide um, that I think gives a pretty good explanation, but we'll dive in a little deeper as we go here. So like LSP is a lightning service provider, uh, kind of like an ISP, it helps people get connected to lightning. Uh, they do this by being well connected in the network, opening channels, and offering inbound liquidity to users. They often charge a fee for their services. Uh, this is a nice little diagram here. You have a user that wants to get onto Lightning, but they're having trouble. LSP, this, this nondescript little tower here, makes it easy to connect, and then we get them onto Lightning. So I think that's a nice place to start, um, but it gets a little more complicated as you get deeper into what an LSP actually is. So when we talk about LSPs, there's a bunch of different companies that are thrown out there, a bunch of different services. I've just thrown a few on here that I've heard have been called LSPs before, um, but they all kind of do different things. And I think it kind of makes it confusing and potentially can be a little tough when you're trying to figure out exactly what you need an LSP for. So I have uh, some alternate terminology I'm gonna put out here. I'm not, a, I'm not saying this should be the way it is, but this is kind of how I understand LSPs versus the other things out there. So let's talk about LSP versus LSP. Or maybe lightning service provider versus liquidity service provider. Or to get more specific, maybe lightning as a service provider versus a liquidity service provider. Um, and maybe we can call it L-A-A-S-P, I don't know. Um, let's just go with Lightning as a service versus an LSP. So the way I think of this, Lightning as a service is a company or a service that helps you run a node or runs a node for you. Usually they're managing the node in the background or they're giving you some service or app that lets you very easily run a node. Typically, a Lightning as a service company will have a nice UI or nice APIs that let you get onto Lightning really easily. And you can see Lightning as a service being custodial or self-custodial. There's kind of examples of both. Whereas an LSP and kind of what we're offering, it's more, to, it's more focused on liquidity. And we can help either you or a Lightning as a service provider manage liquidity. Typically, an LSP runs a well-connected Lightning node that reduces your need to maintain or manage a bunch of Lightning channels. And a lot of LSPs aim to be strictly self-custodial and don't want to hold your money or Bitcoin. So this is kind of a nice way to think about it and I think can kind of highlight the differences and lets us reclaim LSP a little bit. So looking at the ecosystem, this is kind of how I think of it. Uh, I have a nice scale here from users all the way to Lightning. And Lightning as a service, I see really providing a lot of things that face users and make it easy for a user to get onto Lightning or get onto a Lightning node. These things are wallets, payment processors, SDKs, even nodes as a service, like nodes as infrastructure. And after a user gets on one of these services, they always need to get liquidity. And that's where LSPs come in. LSPs are dealing with channels, swaps, advanced liquidity services, maybe like uh, what Dusty was talking about earlier. And I see kind of L Lightning as a service being the top layer up near users and LSPs being more closer to Lightning and helping to connect users to Lightning directly. So I took those companies from before, put them into this graph here. Uh, Breeze may be a little special. They're running their own LSP voltage too, but definitely places where you go and you don't, you can theoretically not know much or anything about Lightning and get on board, get onto a node, be able to send and receive payments. 
Light Spark, Open Node, Albi. And down here is where we are, LSP, C equals, LN Big is an old one, Block Tank is another one. Places where you can get liquidity. And in the future, I see these kind of two categories working a lot together, where companies that want to specialize in offering nice services for their users probably don't want to be so involved in the liquidity story, and companies that can specialize in liquidity can really provide good services for people who are trying to provide lightning up the stack. So why use an LSP? And uh, right here I say layer three is liquidity. I don't know, uh, you know, I'm just gonna leave it there and not say anything, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of apt. Every lightning node needs liquidity. When you use a lightning node service provider, when you download a wallet, when you are running your own node, the first thing you find out, whether you're doing it yourself or you're using a service, uh, maybe the people around the service find out, is that you need liquidity, you need to open channels. And especially when you want to receive payments, you need someone to open a channel to you, unless you're doing something fancy with like a swap or something like that. LSPs specialize in providing this liquidity. Inbound liquidity, I'd argue, is one of the first things an LSP has to do to get users on board. And having a partner that you can get inbound liquidity from is really valuable because it basically unlocks your ability to receive payments on Lightning. Another thing here is when you're working with an LSP, especially if you're doing something like a self-custodial wallet or something where you have a bunch of users and you're not necessarily running a node for them, having an LSP work with you means that you don't have to raise a bunch of money to fund all the channels that your users are gonna use. The LSP will specialize in offering channels to your users, which can be really cool. The other thing about liquidity is that liquidity quality matters. So when you get inbound liquidity, you can go to a number of different places and get it. And uh, what you can find, what I found the first time I ever bought inbound liquidity was um, I went to a website, I paid some stats, I got a channel, and the channel just didn't work. I couldn't receive payments. I could barely send payments through it. And this is something that I think LSPs are really gonna compete on in the future because you can have a bunch of Bitcoin to use to open up channels, but if you're not managing the other end and you're not thinking deeply about the way you're offering your liquidity, you can be selling inbound that actually isn't very useful. So this is another reason why maybe partnering with an LSP is a good choice because LSPs are incentivized to be really good at this and not only be reliable, but also be cognizant of their liquidity and how they're managing it. Okay, where can I use an LSP? So I think this is pretty um, this is pretty relevant for this conference. There's a lot of developers here. I think there were some workshops about developing on Lightning, and it's important, especially if you're launching a Lightning app or a business or a wallet, to think about where you might want to leverage an LSP to make things easier for yourself. So there's three use cases here. The first one is kind of the original OG use case. It's for people who are running a self-custodial wallet. Um, the person who coined the term LSP was Roy Scheinfeld from Breeze, and he created an LSP for his Breeze wallet kind of out of necessity, and he wrote a lot about it, which was really cool. Um, so this is the use case where you give your user a self-custodial wallet, and they want to load on to that wallet from Cash App, say they need a channel to receive Bitcoin on, and in the wallet use case, a lot of times we'll offer a zero conf just in time channel. So an LSP is a really natural partner with self-custodial wallets, and a really easy way to onboard a bunch of users of a self-custodial wallet without the developer having to figure out where they're gonna get a bunch of Bitcoin and manage a giant node, especially when they're trying to focus on a good experience for their users. The next LSP use case is not as needy as a wallet. It's when you're adding Lightning payments to your business. Merchants on Lightning are going to run this problem pretty quickly of you spin up a Lightning node and you can open channels, but actually when you want to receive a lot of payments, you're dependent on people opening channels towards you. So an LSP is a really nice partner to grab when 
you need to receive a lot of payments, especially if your flow is mostly received. Having a partner that can continually open channels to you and help you manage your liquidity is, um, is a godsend. Finally, if you're making a new type of Lightning app that would benefit from stable and worry-free connections to the Lightning network, picking an LSP is a good idea. Uh, this basically, beyond just inbound liquidity and liquidity management, having one or two channels with someone who is just really good at Lightning is super valuable for a Lightning business. You don't have to worry about whether your channels are good, whether you'll be able to receive payments, whether your partner is down. LSPs are always trying to be up, they're always trying to be liquid, they're always trying to make that experience good. So even if you're not a wallet or you're trying to receive a lot of payments, getting a channel to a big LSP can generally be a good idea. So these are just a couple of the major LSP services. These are the first ones. Um, inbound liquidity we've talked about basically is you buying a channel from an LSP. And the value here is that channel has all the balance on the LSP side, meaning that you're able to receive payments right off the bat, which is not trivial on Lightning right now. Inbound can be gotten from a lot of places. It can be purchased ad hoc just by reaching out. It can be found on marketplaces like Amboss Magma. And with some LSPs, and some LSPs are working on this now, you can programmatically request inbound through an API and pay for it that way. The other major LSP service is swaps. Um, we potentially will have splices in the future, but swaps are what we have today. And swaps allow you to move Bitcoin from your on-chain wallet to Lightning and vice versa. Um, swap services can be found online. There's some APIs as well. There's Loop, there's Bolts. There's a few ways to do this, but in general, um, it's good to have an LSP that can do both. And what are the benefits of using an LSP? We talked about this before. An LSP is a great liquidity source. If you're not trying to raise a bunch of money just to have Bitcoin to open channels to your users, picking an LSP is a really easy way to get going. Um, LSPs are incentivized to be really well connected and well managed and reliable. So when you pick an LSP, you have a good connection from day one and you have a solid connection to Lightning Network you can depend on. Finally, an LSP can be a partner to sustain your liquidity needs. After you get those first channels and you're finding out what your flow of payments are, an LSP can work with you either directly or through tools and services they offer to make sure that you're able to send and receive payments as per your application. This will peek at the future. Um, we're really excited about async payments. Async payments are give the ability to send and receive Lightning payments when the user isn't online. And async payments actually depend pretty directly on LSPs who help to hold HDLCs and make sure that liquidity isn't tied up across the network to make that happen. So async payments are gonna be a really cool way to leverage LSPs in the future for wallets and payments alike. Um, also, more advanced liquidity services. Uh, as we get to more fancy stuff like splices, uh, certain types of swaps and other things, LSPs can help you keep things going and keep things going in a really reliable, quick way. Finally, I'm seeing definitely a lot of potential in smart management where LSPs will be able to watch your channels and make sure that your channels are liquid in the right places for your use. So a lot of really good reasons to use LSPs. Okay, any questions about LSPs before I get into the C equals part? Went through a lot there. Do you lose privacy using one? If, if you can get a C on the channels, are you like are the on-chain surveillance services going to be spinning up LSPs just so they can monitor the network better? The question was, do you lose privacy with an LSP? A little bit, but an LSP kind of acts like a routing node. After you get that first channel, um, the LSP doesn't necessarily know that you're the only channel that you have. So an LSP can see 
hey, a payment went from my channel with you to this other channel, but they don't know that what the final destination of your payment is. They don't know where the payments coming from outside the Lightning Network are coming from. So to some extent, an LSP can see volume, but ne can't necessarily see who you're sending payments to, where you're getting payments from. Usually an LSP probably doesn't even know who you are if you're using like a wallet and you've requested inbound through an API. So a little bit, but um, not to the extent you would think. Yep. Question, how can a customer assess the quality of the liquidity of an LSP provides? That's a really good question. How does a customer assess the quality of liquidity that LSP provides? That's something that isn't really well solved right now. And it's something actually I was just talking to um, <laughs> the guys at Lightning Labs about because they have the terminal score, which to some extent gives you an idea of what a node, how well a node is run, but actually doesn't capture things like, do you have inbound in the right places? And is your liquidity in the right spot? And it's actually kind of a hard problem to think about too, because when you request it now from an LSP, it's impossible for the LSP to know exactly who you're planning on receiving payments from. So it's a really interesting thing to think about. I don't know if I have the answer quite yet, but um, in general, like just a node that is really big is probably a safe bet and a node that is known for, it's something you kind of have to find out after you get the channel, but um, I'm sure over time we'll be finding new ways to measure that. That's a good question. Yep. As an analyst, how's the pricing Yeah, so the question is, how is pricing determined with an LSP? Typically, when you buy a channel, you're paying a small percentage of the total channel capacity, which is really nice because you don't have to come up with all of the Bitcoin for a channel that you want to create. Instead, you can pay one, two, three percent of that channel size and receive the potential to get a much larger amount of Bitcoin over time as you're receiving payments, for, for instance. So it's kind of it's varying right now, but it's on the order of one, two, three percent, um, and will definitely change over time. I think the market's really early right now. But what's really cool is that when you are buying inbound, you're able to pay a small amount of money for the amount of inbound that the LSP is committing towards you, which really uh, pays off in the long run. You're able to stay on Lightning longer. You don't have to invest as much to eventually receive payments, which is really cool. Cool. So that's a bit about LSPs, and you know, there's a lot going on out there, and uh, I hope it kind of gives you an idea of what I think LSPs are really about. And you know, everyone can call themselves an LSP, but I think uh, you know, it's good to differentiate and know uh, what's going on. Okay, so now is the um, maybe the requisite part where I talk about why C equals is a good LSP and our sponsor of BTC plus plus. I have to I have to put in a little bit of a shill here, so um, <laughs> bear with me. So why C equals C equals was founded in June of last year, uh, pretty recently. Um, we are part of Block, which is really cool. Um, and here's three reasons why you should pick C equals. First one, we have shadowy super coders like uh, Z-Man and John Cantrell. Uh, second reason, we have ample liquidity. And the third reason is we'll be on the cutting edge of the next generation of Lightning features. So I'll dive into each one here. So our shadowy super coders, Z-Man, John Cantrell, they're both anonymous devs. We're really happy to have them. And what's really cool about what they're doing, Z-Man specifically, is helping to define the open LSP spec right now. And uh, you can go on GitHub, you can see we have a couple PRs open right now just around about liquidity, and we're working on open source specs to kind of define the LSP market. So eventually, 
Pretty soon, actually, you'll be able to implement these specs and connect to LSPs like C equals, but also other LSPs and start doing what I was talking about before in a programmatic way and kind of an easy way. Um, also, John is right behind Z-Man. Z-Man is helping to write the spec and John is currently working on implementing the OpenLSP spec in LDK. There is a LDK repo open right now with libraries for both the client and server sides of this LSP relationship. So we're doing a lot of work in the open source world to herald this along and kind of make it an open thing where if you want to run an LSP, you could also do that. Um, and there's more to come here, but we're really proud of our, our couple engineers here who are helping to make LSPs a thing in an open way. The second reason here, we have ample liquidity. I don't know what to say about this besides we have Bitcoin and we like Lightning and uh, we'll be here for a while. I don't think it's necessarily given that all the LSPs out there have a lot of Bitcoin that they're willing to put up for this. I think some LSPs even talk about maybe borrowing Bitcoin um, and it's nice to know that the Bitcoin is there. The third reason, and this is kind of a big one and just kind of shows more and more every day, is we are on LDK. Um, our node runs LDK natively. It has been blessed personally by Macarello. That part might not be true, Sorry. actually. <laughs> I, uh, I have to put in the little footnote, which is um, Macarello is available to bless any LDK implementation, <laughs> any, uh, any application built on LDK. Spiral is a nonprofit, open source, part of Block. So um, the same treatment we get is treatment you could get if you were building on LDK. But um, it is pretty cool to hit up Macarello and you know find out if you're doing things right. Um, as on. a oh sorry, or on yeah <laughs> anyone. As LDK develops, the next generation of end user UX focused Lightning features um, will be a first adopter and partner. We run LDK natively, and we'll look at the roadmap after this. But um, LDK is doing some really cool stuff, especially around mobile wallets and lightweight lightning applications, which is pretty sweet. And integrating with us will be as easy as adding the LSP client to your LDK app. John is working on those LSP libraries right now, so um, probably want to reach out to us just to make sure that we can make everything work and make everything go together. But if your app is on LDK, we're on LDK, things should work out pretty well. And yeah, I just want to do a shout out to LDK here. This roadmap is ridiculous. Steve announced this a month ago, and um, I think this is really cool. LDK Node Mobile is something that you can build your mobile LDK wallet on, and it's kind of ready-made, ready to go. Um, Bolt 12, I put a spicy emoji against, but um, I think Bolt 12 is really cool and really important, and it's great that LDK is prioritizing it. Taproot channels, splicing, dual-funded channels, all these things are going to make, especially mobile Lightning, but really any other Lightning app easier to use, and with an LSP partnering with you, it just becomes a really nice experience. Um, going down the line here and what LDK is ultimately building towards is that async payment support. Having an LSP that knows how to do async payments and that is supporting async payments is going to be probably one of the most important features you can have in Lightning. Um, it's something that users expect from payments and it's probably one of the biggest things missing from Lightning UX right now. So working on LDK is really awesome and we're really happy to be there. And if you all want to develop something on LDK, we'll be a natural, uh, natural fit with your app. Okay, so I, I went a little quick there, but uh, that, that's my presentation. If you want to talk about LSPs, feel free to reach out. My email is on here, and slain at C equals. We also have inquiries at C equals XYZ. Uh, I'm here for a little bit. Come up and talk to me. We can talk about liquidity, what we can offer, what your needs are, and go from there. Um, but yeah, hope you guys learned something. Thanks. Where are you guys
guys today, like, for instance, I can just send you to the natural place with cash app and provide them with liquidity. Like, are you guys doing that yet or no? Right now, we have our node on the network and we're building um, the inbound liquidity services and services I had mentioned in the slides. Um, cash app it would be a very natural connection for us. Uh, considering we're both under the block umbrella. Um, no updates on that right now, but I'm sure in the future that's a likely possibility. Yep. This is all, Nick. I'm curious if you could expand a bit on the asynchronous payments aspect of it, like what, what would be involved from an LSD perspective? Yeah, so the question was asynchronous payments, um, why do you need an LSP? What does that involve? Asynchronous payments are really cool. Um, basically, it gives you the ability to send or receive a payment um, and not be online on the Lightning Network. The way this works is instead of you sending a payment and making all those HGLCs and the recipient not being there, so those HGLCs stay locked up over the network, what you can do is you can send a Onion message to the recipient or the recipient's LSP and say, hey, I have a payment for you and you can actually create the first HGLC to your LSP. And that HGLC can sit there between your LSP and you, and the other, the recipient's LSP can uh, wait until the recipient comes online. After the recipient comes online, the recipient's LSP can say, hey, we're online, we're ready to go, and your LSP can create the path from the LSP to the receiving user and have that payment go through while they're online. So it's a way to make it so that you can send to someone who's not online and not type liquidity over the network waiting for that pre-image. Um, it really depends on having some smart LSPs in the middle that can help out. So, so on that, would that mean LSPs on both sides need to be, let's say, asynchronous compatible or only the end, you know, the, the receiver LSP is required to have that feature? It depends on which way you're going. So for you to, if you're an always online node, you could be sending to someone who's sometimes offline. In that case, you don't have to have an LSP. Um, and the other way goes as well, like if you are not always online and you wanna send, but you're not potentially gonna be online, um, you can have an LSP on your end, but the person on the other end could just speak the, the onion message language basically. Yep. So, um, stupid question, but what? How is the liquidity provider compensated for providing liquidity in your lightning channel and just general? No, that's a really good question. The question was, how is the liquidity provider compensated for providing liquidity? And the answer is, um, typically they're paid up front. So when you request a channel from an LSP, you actually either pay. Um, right then and there, you say, hey, I'll give you this amount of money, you open this channel towards me, and that can be something that you do on a marketplace or something you do ad hoc or even through an API. Um, you can also have in kind of the wallet LSP spec work workflow we're talking about, you can make it such that when you receive your first payment, the LSP will open a channel on demand and take a small fee from that first payment. So you imagine the use case where You've just opened up your Lightning Wallet app. Your friend has told you Lightning's really fast and they send you your first Lightning payment or maybe you're even funding from something like Cash App. Uh, you're able to receive that payment instantly with a fee taken off. But that's generally how LSPs are compensated is upfront for the channel. Um, there's also routing fees that kind of go from there and other service fees if you use a swap or something like that. But inbound is kind of the first place. How do you see splicing changing LSPs? Ben asked, how do you see splicing changing LSPs? Um, I would definitely suggest checking out Dusty's presentation. Um, he was right before me. It opens up a world of possibilities and even just listening to Dusty, my head was kind of exploding because um, I think we had known kind of intuitively that splicing will be important. But the thought of being able to move liquidity from one channel to another, especially when you're an LSP trying to make sure liquidity is all in the right place, is really cool. Um, also, being able to offer liquidity on demand, where you know instead of offering we open another channel to you, we can just splice into that channel, is really cool. 
So I don't think that it will make LSPs go away or anything like that. If anything, I think it will add some more um, kind of oomph and some more value to the services an LSP can provide. Yep. I'm curious about kind of the, the dynamic app block when it comes to the Bitcoin that you guys have on the balance sheet. Are, are there any sort of like proof points or milestones C equals needs to make in order to bring more of that Bitcoin on the balance sheet um, into, into C equals as liquidity operating on the Lightning Network? And is there any kind of like cap on how much of that can go to C equals? Yeah, the question was, um, can Nick take all the Bitcoin from Jack <laughs> and put it on the light? <laughs> yeah. And the answer is, um, no one said no, but um, I think we want to be really careful about how we're doing it. And yeah, we want to show that we can mature the business of the node over time. We could have just put you know, 8,000 Bitcoin onto the Lightning Network all at once, but that to me does not seem like the way to really grow the Lightning Network. I think um, as we start offering our inbound liquidity services and go from there, I think that's gonna justify more investment in the, in the business as we go. Um, but I guess uh, more to come. Do you, do you see Sorry. a scenario where like LSPs, have LSPs and get to a situation where like failures on that can just like go away in general. You can imagine like an LSP having trusted LSPs that they have service contracts with, and then that way we can just kind of like you know route on the network and never have any failures there. I was curious if like LS like being able to service other LSPs is that something you guys are thinking of? Tony. Thanks. Tony was asking if LSPs will serve other LSPs and will there be a big LSP network? Maybe, I don't know. Um, I think it's something where be, having cooperative partners and managing channels and liquidity is pretty nice. And there definitely is value in providing liquidity for people. So I don't know if um, there's gonna be, I'm not sure actually. I think it'd be open to it, especially if, like linking up with other LSPs. I don't think there'll be one LSP to rule them all. And I really kind of don't want that to happen. Um, LSPs will only be able to serve a certain amount of customers, whether it be because of who they want to partner with or because who they're allowed to partner with. Um, so I think there will be a robust ecosystem of LSPs at the very least. Yep. I was wondering how you decided who to be the right experts to work with on when it comes to managing the known and things like that. Because it's not a typical like, um, kind of knowledge that any programmer or coder, you know, um, would have, like, how do you, the, how do you, like, this is the right person that should be working on this or else? Oh, the question was, um, how do we pick, how do we decide who are the best people to work on LSP? And that is a really good insight in that people who are really deep in, like, the lightning spec and making lightning nodes and implementations, they're not necessarily running a lightning node. And I talked about, um, I have the throwaway comment of liquidity is the layer three. Um, I really do think it, well, I'm not going to say it's exactly layer three, but liquidity on Lightning is kind of the meta game that you really have to be on Lightning to understand. Um, so the people we've hired for our team are all people who, you know, Z Man and John specifically, Z Man has written a lot about liquidity. He actually coded uh, CL Boss, which was a way to. Uh, automatically manage nodes and through that work he had to talk to a lot of node runners and find out their issues with liquidity and how hard it is to run a routing node and getting that direct feedback I think kind of sets Cmet apart um, but um, yeah in general lightning is just such a new thing and all of this stuff is evolving over time so really beyond like our shadowy super coder experts we mostly look for people who are really open to um you know exploring and learning kind of low ego looking to just find out what works and people who are ready to be wrong and then fix it basically <laughs> yeah yep based on recent mobile impact and uh, the Well, 
Mm. Okay, so the first question was about TAM for the use cases. Um, you know, it's hard to put exact numbers on this, but when I think about these use cases, I'm thinking about people who are using uh, self-custodial wallets. I hope that's everyone someday. So I think that's a hugely, um, it has a huge potential for growth. Um, the kind of same thing goes with people are accepting lightning payments. If lightning is going to take off, it should be circular. We should have people on both ends. So, um, you know, I, it's hard to say exactly what it is right now, but the hope and the, the dream here is that it becomes very, very large as lightning becomes a payment standard that's used across the world. And what was your other question? I didn't really catch it. Uh, Yeah, so risk um, that a bigger company is going to come in and, um, you know, I think there's something to be said about the quality of the service you're providing. And even right now, like we have a lot of Bitcoin available, um, you know, if someone came with 100,000 Bitcoin and dropped on the Lightning Network right now, I don't know how well that would go, honestly. Um, so I think this is something where of course, there's going to be people competing on price, but we're really going to try to compete on quality of service and definitely like show that we are a, a premium out there. Yep. Do you think there will be any kind of requirement for knowing who's on the other side of the chain roll? Do I think there'll be any requirement for knowing who's on the other side of the channel? Um, I don't know. It's a tough question. What's really cool about Lightning is that it's trustless, it's non-custodial. Running an LSP means that you're basically, you know, just operating a node on the network, but sometimes people are paying you to open a channel for them. Um, I don't think, like right now, the SQLs node is running, and if you wanted to open a channel to it, you could, and we don't have to uh, take down your information like that, um, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know what the future is going to hold in that regard, but I think there's some really good arguments about how Lightning works and how, you know, even though if you look at it from a high level, maybe some people might say, oh, an LSP is kind of like a bank. But in reality, what we're offering is really kind of purely technology services. And even though there is money involved, we're never actually holding someone's money. We're never actually in the critical path for someone sending a payment or anything like that. So um, I can't uh, I can't say for sure, but right now um, we're not doing it. So. Any other questions? One launch. One launch. We're working on it. <laughs> the LSP spec is currently in development, and um, it's nearly done, at least for about liquidity. Also, John is working on those LSP libraries for LDK, so we're getting there. Um, all I can say is um, soon, TM. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone.